Okay, so this is section 2.7 in your textbook and it's on solving linear inequalities. Okay, so we just solved linear equations, right? In the last section in the last video. Okay, so this one is solving inequalities. So instead of an equal sign, we have our four inequality symbols, okay? And it's very important that you know how to read these, okay? Less than, less than or equal to. So the only difference there is that we have a line under our sign and then greater than, greater than or equal to, okay? So I'm not, I don't care how you know this, right? I know in school, you probably learned about the alligator, right? So if X is on this side and you have the alligator mouth opening towards it, that's greater than. If it's opening away from it, it's less than, okay? If that's how you learned it and that's how you remember it, great, okay? We need to know how to read those symbols, okay? And let's look at how to graph these on a number line. Number lines are gonna be helpful for us, especially at the beginning, okay? So we want X to be on the left side just because we read from left to right, okay? And we're gonna shade in the direction that the arrow points, okay? So the arrow, this would be the arrow, right? It's pointing this way. So that's the way we would shade, okay? Um, if it's this way, it's pointing that way. So we shade that way, okay? We're gonna give parentheses if it's strict, okay? So strict means that there's no equal sign under it. We'll give brackets if there is an equal sign under it. We're gonna write our, all of our answers in interval notation, okay? Um, that's just a way for us to write our answers so that the reader knows, whoever's looking at the problem, knows what X can be, right? X is gonna be multiple numbers in this interval, okay? And it seems silly, but we always read from left to right. There's gonna be a point where you're gonna to want to write from right to left, but we don't read that way. We read from left to right, and I'll show you that um, in just a minute. Another thing is that infinity and negative infinity always get parentheses, no matter what, that's just a rule, okay? You don't have to look at anything to determine that, it always gets parentheses, okay? So let's look, let's just put some of these in the number line. These are already solved for X. We don't have to solve anything. Okay, so it says graph and write your answer in interval notation. So we have X is greater than negative two. So here's negative two right here. Let's see which way we go at X is greater than negative two, okay? My rule says whichever way the arrow points. So it's this way. But if you think about it for a second, answer this question. What, what's a number greater than negative two? Four, five, one, zero, right? All of the numbers that look to be this way, right? So shade this way. And what's gonna be around negative two is a parentheses because we do not have an equal to sign. If we had an equal to sign, that would mean we would put a bracket around that, okay? Um, so what this is saying is that X can be all the numbers greater than negative two, but not negative two, okay? So if I'm gonna put these in interval notation, we read from left to right, left to right, Okay, and we have positive infinity way over here, negative infinity way over here, right? So from left to right, where does it start? Where does it end from left to right? So it starts at negative two and ends all the way at positive infinity, right? Infinity always gets parentheses. And we know that our negative two is gonna have a parentheses because we don't have an equal to sign on our symbol. So this is what the interval notation would look like, okay? Let's do another one. X is less than or equal to three, okay? Here's three. And I'm all the numbers less than or equal to three. So if I were to ask you, what's a number that's less than three? You would say zero, you would say two, one, you would say all the numbers this way, right? So that's where we're gonna shade. 
And what's around three is a bracket because of our symbol. It has an equal to sign, okay? Again, we're gonna write from left to right. Okay, so left to right, where do we start? We start all the way out here at negative infinity and we go to three. Three has a bracket because of our symbol. Negative infinity always has a parentheses because that's the rule, okay? So you need to remember that negative infinity is always on the very left. Okay, it's always gonna be over here. If it's over here, it's not right. Okay, you would not write this like that. That's not correct. This is also not correct. That means we would shade this way. Okay, left to right. All right, look at this one. This one is called a compound inequality. You don't need to know that, but that is what it's called. And we have two things going on, hence why it's called compound inequality. Let's read this way and then this way, okay? Neg oh, I just said let's read away and then I was gonna read the other way. X is greater than negative two and it's less than five, okay? And these are actually easier to graph than all the other ones, okay? So here's negative two, here's five. And X, if you look at X, it's literally in between these two values, right? Literally, figuratively, it's in between these two values. And that's what it means on the number line, that X is in between these two values, okay? Well, we still need to know bracket and parentheses, okay? So here on negative two, we're gonna have parentheses. And here on five, we'll have a bracket. Okay, so every single time, if you have the X in the middle like that, you're gonna shade in between the two numbers, okay? So from left to right, when we're looking at our interval notation, You have negative two and five. It starts at negative two, it ends at five, and you have parentheses bracket, okay? Every single time, those will be in between those two numbers, okay? So on the ones where X is in the middle, you don't use infinities at all, right? All right, one more. This one's backwards, you see? Negative one is less than or equal to X. That's hard to kind of think about. So let's switch it around, okay? Because let's read it this way. X is greater than or equal to negative one. X is greater than or equal to negative one. Notice how my sign had to flip whenever I wrote it the other way, right? Okay, so at negative one, X is greater than negative one, right? So it's going this way. And it has a bracket because of our equal to sign. And from left to right, from the left, it starts at negative one and goes to infinity. So that would be our interval notation, okay? So hopefully that cleared things up with how we, once we've solved these, this is how we're gonna look at it on a number line and in interval notation, okay? All right, so all of these were solved for X, but what if they are not, okay? Good news is it looks a lot like solving for um, equations, okay? Solving for X, right? Really, it's no different except for one little thing, okay? So again, we're gonna simplify each side. That means um, combine like terms, distribute, find the least common denominator, just like we did on the equations. 
we're gonna get our X's together on the left side and constants on the right side. We're gonna do left and right like that because we don't want it to be backwards, okay? And then we'll divide each side by the coefficient of X, okay? That's exactly what we did. Um, that's the isolation step that we did on our um, equations. The only thing is right here. When you divide by a negative number, flip the inequality. When you divide by a negative number, so let's say we had negative seven X is less than 21 and we divided by negative seven. We divided by a negative number, so we'd flip our sign to greater than like that, okay? And then we're gonna graph and write in interval notation, okay? So look at this one. We start off by just solving like we solved equations. Okay, so we need to distribute here, right? This is our simplify step. We need our X's on the left. So we're gonna move this over to the left, right? We're still creating zero there. Then we're gonna add 11, creating zero there. Okay, isolate, we're gonna create one, right? So absolutely nothing was different except there was a less than sign instead of an equal sign, right? So X is less than one. If we threw that on a number line, here's one. I'm all the numbers less than one. So I'm this way, right? All the numbers less than one, we'd have a parentheses around that because there's no equal to sign. So from left to right, We're starting at negative infinity. We're going all the way to one. Always parentheses and our one has parentheses too. Okay. Now let's do this one. Same thing, let's distribute. Okay, and I'm gonna keep them on the left. So I'm creating zero there. I'm gonna move my constant over, creating zero with 15. Okay, now I need to isolate. I'm gonna divide by whatever is connected to X and creating one, right? I divided by a negative number. I divided by negative eight. That means I flip it, right? Less than or equal to changes to greater than or equal to. And then negative 16 divided by negative eight is two. So X is greater than or equal to two. So if we throw that on a number line, there's two and I'm greater than or equal to two. So I'm all these numbers. And then I'm gonna put a bracket around it because I'm equal to. And then from left to right, I start at two, I go to infinity, bracket parentheses, right? Okay. Look at this one, this one has good old fractions in it, okay? When there's fractions, it's the same rule as equations. We need to find the least common denominator, okay? And we're dealing with four, two, two, and one, right? And we're dealing with one because of this one, right? So our least common denominator is four, okay? Because four is the smallest number that all of these denominators can go into. So we, make my pen a little smaller, multiply each term by four. This is the same thing we did for equations. Nothing new here, okay? Then we're going to simplify these fractions. Four over four is one. Two, four over two is two. Four over two 
is two, and then one over four is just four. So leave that one be. Do we have ones in all of our denominators? Yes. So we're good. We've gotten rid of our denominators. That was still our goal, okay? So now we're gonna multiply one times X is X minus two times one is two, less than or equal to two times X is two X plus one times four is four, okay? I multiplied here, 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 and here, okay? Now I just need to collect and isolate, right? So subtract two X because I need it on the left side. So I created zero. Add two. Okay, we need X by itself, not negative X by itself. And there's an understood one here, right? So if we divided both sides by negative one, that creates one, right, right here. Negative one over negative one is one. So we're left with X and we divided by a negative. So that means we flip it. So X is greater than, I don't think I have a, oh yeah, I do. X is greater than negative six. Okay, so negative six isn't even on our number line here. But we can maybe extend it a little bit. Let's say negative six is right there, okay? At negative six, we're greater than negative six, okay? These are kind of hard to think about when they're negative. If I need a number greater than a negative number, that's gonna be a positive number, right? So I need to get less and less negative, which means I need to move this way, right? And I'm gonna have a bracket. So from left to right, left to right, negative six all the way to infinity, right? Okay. Okay, so this is 2.7 continued. We have a little bit more of it to cover. And in this, we're gonna cover compound inequalities, okay? compound inequalities and that's when it's formed by joining two inequalities together okay and your goal and this is very important to get x in the middle by itself okay and these are actually super easy to graph because you just have to remember if x is in the middle then you color in the middle okay so our example says solve each compound inequality and graph your answer on the number line provided, okay? So here's our inequality right here. And we wanna keep X in the middle, okay? So remember when we, in the last video and the one before that when we were working with equations, we were manipulating one side and getting zero and that was like moving it over to the other side. Here, we're gonna manipulate the middle because we want X to be alone in the middle. So to do that, we would need to subtract five X, not five X, just five, sorry. Subtract five, right? Well, if you do it to the middle, you do it to either side. Okay, if you do it to the middle, you do it to either side. That creates zero in there in the middle and you have X by itself, which is what we want, right? So we have two is less than X, and then we have six on the other side, okay? I'm gonna move it over here, okay? So two and six, let me put six over here. Two and six, right? and X is in the middle of those numbers. So if X is in the middle, you color in the middle, right? And then we already worked on this on the last video. Both of them have parentheses because both of them do not have equal two signs, right? 
If this one had an equal to sign, this one would have a bracket. If this one had an equal to sign, this would have a bracket. If they both had equal twos, they both would have a bracket, okay? So that's all you have to do for that. All right, let's see this one. We're gonna start, remember, you're working from the middle. Always work from the middle. You are never going to, it wouldn't make any sense for us to subtract three from both sides and get zero right here. That didn't manipulate the middle, that made the middle more complicated, right? So, manipulate the middle, plus three. Right, that gave us zero there. So that gives us six is less than for X less than or equal to 22. Now we have four X. So we need to create one. So you divide every single side, I'll do it in a different color every single part by four, okay? That creates one right here, that's what we want. So we have X in the middle. Okay, 22 over four, um, we can simplify that down, right? Two go in, goes into both, so 11 over two. And then six, over four, two goes into both of those, so three over two. All right, so we're gonna put that on the number line. Again, I'm gonna move it over here. Okay, so three over two, that's a one and a half. So that's just, oh, sorry, that's right there. And then 11 over two, that's a little, over five, right? So we're somewhere around there. We color in the middle, remember? And then equal to on our three halves, so bracket parentheses on our 11 over two. And that's it. Okay. Look at this one. This one has a fraction with our x, okay? So let's get our x in the middle alone as much as we can, right? Because all of our other ones are whole numbers. So if we added four, that would be okay. So we get negative two is less than or equal to x over two is less than seven, okay? Now let's get rid of our fraction. The way that we get rid of our fraction is multiplying by the least common denominator, right? And the only denominator that we have other than one, right? Because here's one is two. So we need to multiply everything by two. Right, because that would give us one right there. So we get X. 14 and negative four, right? And we're done. That was actually pretty much easier than the, all the other ones, right? So negative four and 14, of course we don't have 14 on our number line, but we'll say 14 is way over there. Of course it would be, it would be further, but and we are gonna, shade in the middle, right? And then four, negative four has a bracket, 14 has parentheses, okay? And that is how we do compound inequalities. The main, main, main thing is that we keep X in the middle. So we're gonna manipulate the middle. Everything stems from the middle. And then we just shade in between whatever two numbers. Okay.